Welcome to MHM Podcast Network on moviehousememories.com. Podcast for pod people. Our feature presentation begins now. Welcome back to Movie Stars here at moviehousememories.com where I serve up quickie film reviews from days gone by. I'm Chris, and for this episode, I am reviewing 1968's Blackbeard's Ghost. This film was actually one of my favorites from when I was a kid. It's an all-ages comedy based on a 1965 Ben Stahl novel. This one stars Peter Ustinov as Captain Blackbeard, Dean Jones as Steve Walker, and Suzanne Plachette as Joanne Baker. Uh, Robert Stevenson directed the film, which Buena Vista Distribution released on February 8th, 1968. And it corresponded with the 250th anniversary of the 1978 death of the real-life Blackbeard, the pirate, Edward Thatch. Blackbeard's ghost takes place in the town of Godolphin, Maryland, where their college has hired Steve Walker to coach their decrepit truck team. Once in town, Steve learns that an evil gangster named Silky Seymour is out to swindle Blackbeard's descendants known as the Daughters of the Buccaneers. And he's going to swindle them out of their inn. A beautiful single professor named Joanne Baker tries to help these daughters. And when Steve spots her, he falls head over heels in love with her. However, Steve's life gets a little complicated when he accidentally conjures up Blackbeard's ghost, a ghost that only he can see or hear. Blackbeard's ghost. It's the second of three Disney pairings with Dean Jones and Suzanne Plachette. The first one being 1966's The Ugly Dotson and the last being The Shaggy DA in 1976. Now, Dean Jones, he does a pretty good job playing the good-natured coach with principal. He never wants his team to cheat. And even when Blackbeard does cheat, Jones's character quits for what he believes in. Jones is the perfect straight man to Peter Ustinov's Blackbeard. He exudes the forthright nature that Walt Disney likes in their actors on the big screen. His chemistry with the perky Suzanne Plachette is always wonderful. And Suzanne Plachette is a great straight woman in her own right. While most of you might remember her of her six years or so on the Bob Newhart show, uh, she's a joy to watch in any role she plays. As Professor Joanne Baker, she easily holds her own opposite any actor in this film, even when she's observing Jones's act with an invisible ghost. She and Jones have such great rapport, it's very clear why Disney paired the two of them in a number of films. Joby Baker, he plays Silky Seymour, your typical mustache twirling bad guy of the day. Uh, He's even decked out all in black. Baker does his best with the part uh, that he's given, even though this character is pretty one-dimensional. He manages to deliver a pretty good portrayal of an evil mobster while keeping the mood fairly light. You know, this is a Disney family comedy after all, so they're not going to go too dark in the 1960s. The real star of this film is Peter Ustinov as Blackbeard. He's known for many films like Spartacus and Billy Budd. Uh, Ustinov steals the show. He is to Blackbeard what I think Johnny Depp is going to be to Captain Jack Sparrow in the future. Both men embrace their character so thoroughly that they uh, they capture the full spirit of the film, and it's to the point you can't imagine anyone else portraying their character. Ustinov, he's witty and playful in this film. He's even vulnerable at times, something you might not see coming. Uh, all the while maintaining all the bad traits of a Disney anti-hero. He's dressed in that awesomely made pirate outfit, and you never think you're watching anyone but Blackbeard himself. I would say, really, Johnny Depp is the only one who has outdone him for Disney pirate films. One of the things I always appreciate is the film with a good runtime. This one's 106 minutes long. Uh, it's well-paced. Uh, the whole family will enjoy it. Uh, you won't be looking at your watch, wondering when it's going to be done, which I have done with a few Disney films in recent memory. 
Uh, this one does seem a bit more adult oriented than kid oriented. I'm not going to say it's going as far as Shrek themed, but you know, there are some more adult themes for 1968. Uh, I don't really recall any children in this film. And that's due to the fact that this film takes place at a coastal college town. However, kids are going to enjoy Blackbeard's antics. And although the character is an alcoholic, because even back then alcoholism is comedy gold, that serious is downplayed in this film. For a 58 year old film, these special effects in this hold up pretty well. Uh, there's moments where the uh, green screen or whatever screen they used back in the day is evident and it's outdated. Um, however, Blackbeard driving the car through town, the driverless motorcycle bit, the little slapstick casino fight, uh, they're, they're a very good use of special effects that hold up to this day. One of my favorites is still the Broxton Relay track meet where an invisible Blackbeard picks up a Godolphin college pole vaulter as he vaults, vaults him to victory. He runs with Gooder Larkin in the relay and manages to throw objects great distances for the team. These effects are pretty flawless in their ex execution for the day. They are 1968's version of the Thanos snap. They are that damn good for 1968. The ending. Well, this is a Disney film, so you know you're going to get your Disney fairy tale ending. Uh, we all know how it's going to end. The good guys win. The bad guys get what's coming to them. Uh, but, you know... Even though you can predict the ending in this film, it's not going to tarnish the joy this film brings. Uh, I believe it's the perfect ending for the film. Uh, end of the day, Blackbeard's Ghost is one of those old school Disney gems that I still enjoy to this day. And I'm going to give this film 3.5 stars out of five and recommend everybody add it to their movie list of films. Well, that's it for my quickie review of Blackbeard's Ghost. Let me know what you think of the film in the comments section below. And if you're watching this over on moviehousememories.com, rate it from one to five stars on that page as well. Additionally, if you have a film you'd like to suggest I review, you can drop me a line at comments at moviehousememories.com. And as always, if you enjoyed this review, please subscribe to our channel as we have many, many more film reviews from yesterday, today, and beyond. Well, that's it for today's Movie Stars Quickie Film Review. Until the next time we meet, so long, sayonara, and goodbye. This podcast is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. The theme song for movie stars, Pixie Life, is brought to you by Jack Pierce at premiumbeat.com under a standard license number 3024452. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of movie stars, the MHM Podcast Network, and Fuzzy Bunny Slippers Entertainment, LLC, unless otherwise noted. Noted.